This is a very difficult video to make because although I feel really good and I feel the best that I've felt maybe ever, well at least since my diagnosis, the best I've felt, there's also a lot of like a really negative uh, thing going on in my head because my mum's cancer markers have really shot up, which is really not a good thing. And this is since she had her last scan. Um, and we had every indication that things were going really well. And she was st um, a still asymptomatic, more or less. She has some symptoms, but nowhere near what you would expect in her case. But the thing is, it's just got me thinking because um, sometimes you can get an inflammatory response before you have any kind of remission. Um, but the other thing I was thinking of, because that's, I don't think that's likely, I think it is progression of disease and it's not a good thing. But it could also be related to the contrast dye. She's been having these uh, PET scans and she didn't want to have the glucose, but instead she went ahead and had this uh, iodinated contrast. And the iodinated contrast is a form of intravenous contrast which uses a uh, radioactive um, iodine um, or iodine however you want to pronounce it if you're american you'll say iodine um, but yeah i'll say iodine because i'm not american but um i don't mind however you want to say it but yeah um I was thinking that radioactive iodine might have been a problem because I know that gadolinium is a huge problem and I know that the radioactive iodine can mess up things, it's very descriptive, mess up things, but um, cause problems with thyroid function and all these, um, and also these hormonally related cancers in women and if she has these tumors everywhere it's uh it would make sense if it maybe makes things worse maybe causes disease progression in some way we used to think these things were relatively safe very low risk of um problems and that they were almost fully excreted from the body, if not fully excreted. Um, I think the radioactive iodine, they say, in about a month it can be fully excreted, but I'm not convinced by that. And with all of the research on gadolinium that I've seen, and the problems with that, especially the accumulated problems over time, I know that that's a really bad thing to have. There's loads of problems associated with that, and, and it's been found in tumors and all this, but radioactive iodine, I don't actually know that much about it, this iodinated contrast, but just my gut instinct tells me that it's probably not a good thing. Um, and even the glucose may have been a better option because you could maybe even after you have the scan you could just do loads of exercise to try to use that glucose in some way i don't know yeah i don't know but um or control like the insulin response better because it's not directly the glucose it's the insulin response so it's taking insulin into the cell, I guess. Uh, so, 
Also, these contrasts are high in deuterium, and glucose follows deuterium. So, um, that's why you get these images. Show, it's part of the reason why you get these images glowing and showing on the scans because glucose follows deuterium. Um, and that's how these scans kind of work. So we're trying to find solutions, solutions to difficult problems. That's kind of become my thing. <laughs> And I'm trying to stay positive about it. It's obviously very difficult to do because the prognosis is so bad. But the reason I'm communicating this is so I don't go insane and so that I have some kind of um, proper perspective on this. Um, we've considered lots of different things. She's going to deplete the water more, the deuterium depleted water. Probably down to the lowest point that we can, so 25 parts per million. I know you can actually go a bit lower than that, but I haven't really seen that much in the literature. So 25 parts per million is probably what she'll do. And um, maybe add some other things. Um, like cannabis oil or whatever is available. Um, the cannabis oil is uh, deuterium depleted. I think that's one of the mechanisms. I do also know that it lowers blood glucose um, and it acts on these cannabinoid receptors and there's different receptors for different cancers that is more um, repressed maybe I, I'm not an expert in it but maybe repressed and then you can activate it with um, different cannabinoids cannabinoids? cannabinoids? yeah um, it's evening now so I'm a bit sleepy so that's probably why I'm um, having difficulty communicating this. Also because it's just difficult to communicate something where you're not quite sure how you feel about it yet. Um, or how to react. But I always prepare and my mum always prepares for any, um, any kind of results. So when you do that, you're able to have backup plans. And I still have backup plans for if my cancer comes back. And um, I think that they will be, I think they would be successful because I've thought a lot about this and I've considered different pathways and uh, all these things. I also just know that um, for me things that work for the epilepsy tend to work for the cancer so um, yeah I'm feeling really good at the moment so this is very strange my sleep's really good exercise is going well I'm able to exercise every day in some way It's just difficult when you get things like this happening. Um, difficult to cope with mentally. Because sometimes it's harder if it's someone else than if it's you. I definitely find that. But we'll soldier on. We'll find solutions. Um, we've, we're exploring everything and Thankfully, we have contacts in the field of cancer research who are experts in all of these non-toxic approaches, all these metabolic approaches, um, including repurposed drugs, 
diets, um, hyperbaric oxygen therapy, photobiomodulation, um, thermo, whatever you'd call it, thermoregulation, I don't know, um, thermogenic therapies, maybe you'd call it, um, so just immune mod modulation in different ways and fasting, fasting mimicking diets, all these things. Deuterium depletion ketogenic diets, um, the omega-3 and 6 ratio, looking at vitamin D and also just vitamin D from different, from the actual sun because that offers other benefits and differences. It's different from supplemental vitamin D, more beneficial for many reasons. Um, looking at melanocytes and all these other things, how that affects how well you do and all this stuff. So, thinking about everything, even just mental state and all these things and air quality and breathing every little thing you could think of light entering the retina <laughs> avoiding artificial light uh, mitigating effects from non-native EMF so covering just about everything that we can think of um, but sometimes disease is so advanced that it's difficult to find solutions to these difficult problems. But there's always hope, and you can always try and push things. You could try having inhibitors of certain enzymes involved with um, uptake of certain nutrients, certain substrates. So looking at all these things, inhibiting all these pathways, targeting all these enzymes associated with cancer proliferation, and uptake of those substrates, so the metabolic um, kind of processes and machinery involved in these processes. All these things you can think of. Sometimes a minimalist approach is best, sometimes a scattergun approach is best. Sometimes you just don't know. So you have to try everything and there's nothing to lose. But um, we'll keep trying and um, see what happens. <laughs>